Welcome back and in this second video we're going to be looking at setting up Nina's device interfaces. So because I'm doing this in daylight I'm going to create a profile which is specifically used for these test purposes. So in the options I'm going to look at the profiles and I'm going to create a new one with this little plus button and then I'm going to click on it, I'm going to load it and in loading it it will probably change the colors which it does so I'm just going to change a profile and make it slightly darker and I'm going to give it a sensible name so I'm going to give the profile a name uh, YouTube helps if I can spell correctly okay now everything I now do to the devices will save to this profile name called YouTube and in the following videos I can continue to use this one and not affect my normal imaging so under the equipment tab I'm going to select my camera now I'm going to select my QHY camera and I'm going to connect to it and by connecting to it it'll set the device up and store it in the profile automatically and you'll see that there are a number of controls which allow you to for instance include the overscan its modes and USB limits etc so I'm going to make a few changes I'm going to improve its resilience to USB and I'm going to run at minus 10 and I'm going to change to minus 10 in 10 minutes and when I warm it up again to stop shocking the camera I'm going to do it over a five minute period so I'm now going to select my filter wheel so I have a seven slot filter wheel when this initially connects the filters may not be given names necessarily just lists them as slot 0 to slot 6 and I'll show you in a little while how to change that but there are some manual controls so for instance you can manually change your filter slot and it'll do that in a few seconds so we can move on to the focuser connect that and then I connect to my telescope I'm using a paramount so I have to use the sky X and when you connect to things little boxes appear and it says success or not success and these can be closed with the word close all with the telescope depending on what type of telescope you have there may be a number of commands that you can do to it such as homing parking and setting the tracking rate but it depends on the telescope itself some don't support these things the guider um, I'm going to select PHD2 and connect to it now the important thing with the guider is that um, again uh, PHD2 has equipment profiles and if you notice it says the profile is the simulator so in this case I've chosen a simulator rather than a real camera as I'm doing this in daytime so I can just minimize that and move on I have no switches I have no flat panel I have no weather I don't have a dome and I don't have a safety monitor so for the moment I can ignore those or I could for instance have a simulator and if you click on the properties you can actually toggle is safe on and off so I'm going to say is safe is on and close that in this case the safety monitor is typically used in an observatory setup but not with a portable setup as it's a way of detecting conditions which require the roof to close to protect the equipment from rain or snow anyway there are a number of other things we need to do to finish the setup and under the options tab we'll go through them one by one so for instance there is a sky atlas image folder which is a separate download and I need to point to it I probably only have to do it the once but once I've done that then I can fix that and not worry about it anymore so it's under Nina to like put under catalogs it's that one there so that's that um, there's an error log so I'm going to do um, info log level the thing about the Nina releases they do beta versions and nightly versions and they're pretty stable so unless I have a particular issue I normally have log level um, either 
errors only or warnings um, at the very extreme this trace which you typically would do if you needed to find a bug and help the developers so I'm just going to leave it in the middle device polling interval I don't need to poll the devices uh, rapidly so two seconds is fine I've enabled the server and also it allows me to choose the profile when I start up I can choose my color scheme I'm quite happy to where it is and there's a couple of other things I want to bring in my longitude and latitude now on my system it's stored on the mount but you can bring it in through a GPS device by clicking this button I don't have one connected but if for instance I click on equipment tab and I set my planetarium to the sky X um, and that's the local host it populates automatically and if I make sure I enable the server on the sky X when I go back to this tab I should be able to bring in the longitude and latitude from the mount while on this page there's a rather nice little feature here that allows you to put custom horizons in now this may not be for everybody but certainly if you have an observatory it can usefully set a horizon so that you don't accidentally image through the observatory walls or through a tree and what it's going to do is select the file and if I go back up to here if I just edit rather than open it a horizon file it ends in HRZ is just a series of simple text entries in five degree intervals with the azimuth and the altitude and it just goes all the way through to 360 and that's loaded into the program the beautiful thing about that is is that once you've loaded that and if you went into your framing tab you've got your horizon plotted on the altitude graph so you can see where your target is in relationship to your local horizon and there are lots of ways of doing it but um, that's probably the subject of a more advanced video so let's just go back to our options tab and look at the other things that we need to enter so what I'm going to do is go on to the equipment tab I'm going to put in a name for my telescope uh, it's 500 millimeter focal length focal ratio of say 6 and the settle time is pretty good I'm going to call it a second and because the paramounts don't like being synced when they're doing centering um, in fact they try to disable it I'm going to select this to off it, some other mounts want a sync command and that's the best way of centering after a slew now there's a couple other things on this page which are useful it already knows what the bit depth and the pixel size is because it's interrogated it when it connects to the camera in the case of the filter wheel it's a bit dumb so I need to double click on this slot and start giving the filters some names I'm not going to do them all but now that I've populated lumen red if I now go back to the equipment tab and the filter wheel lumen red now appear in this list so typically you go through all the rest of them and populate them a couple of other things on this page um, planetarium we mentioned briefly uh, that's where it's going to use for either importing coordinates for a target or importing the longitude and latitude you can also do coordinates from selected object that's you can be enabled through there as well the other couple of things you can do is with weather you can either measure it yourself but there are also online weather apps and sort of feeds and you can put that in in here um, I typically use a local sensor because uh, the weather conditions never um, seem to be reliably reported by weather apps if we move on to the focuser tab this is the autofocusing systems that are used now this like other autofocusing systems takes a number of readings at different focus positions and works out which of the focus positions has stars at a minimum size and if you already know the difference in the focus position between filters you can simply put them into as offsets so for instance if the red filter was always 10 units more than the luminance filter you could you could do that and then you would select use filter offsets but typically at the beginning you don't so what it will do is and you'll instruct it elsewhere it'll do an autofocus routine every time you change the filter a couple of other things on this page we need to look at so the autofocus method 
there's half flux radius or contrast detection which is experimental so I will look at the radius of the star and there's a number of different ways of working out where the minimum position is so I typically do trends and hyperbolic which is a mixture of linear trends rather like the old days of focus max but acknowledging that when you get close to focus that linear trend breaks down it's more of a curve so I find trends and hyperbolic work in most cases there are some other settings here which we need to take a look at um, for instance I might want to take two attempts at doing autofocus um, and limit it to the number of stars so if it's a zero it means unlimited but let's say for speed purposes I'm going to choose 50 stars and I'm going to bin at 2x2. Two two. The R threshold at the bottom here is a goodness factor and the default of points excuse me the default of point 0.7 is reasonable so I'm going to leave that alone. It in effect is a confidence weighting so if if the um, confidence is lower than point 0.7 it rejects the autofocus result. On the other side you've got the autofocus step size. So this is how many steps does the autofocuser move between taking different um, settings. This is one of those things that you're going to have to do by trial and error. But typically the combination of this one here and this one here, which is the number of steps, I would want the star sizes to at least double, if not triple in size between the best and the worst case result. Um, disable guiding during autofocus? The answer is yes. I don't want it messing up the star shapes. Um, focusing settle time, I'm not worried. Number of exposures per point, it will take several exposures and average results. You might want to do something about that. So for instance, if your mount doesn't track very well, you might want to do several very short exposures as opposed to one long one. The inner crop ratio and the outer crop ratio allow you to exclude certain stars in the autofocus. So for instance, if you just set the inner crop ratio to say, 0.5 that will mean that it will just simply take um, an area which is 50% in the middle and exclude all the margins. If I change the outer crop ratio and say 0.9 that will exclude the outer 10% and so in effect I have an annulus now area where I'm measuring star sizes. The 0.5 is probably a little bit on the, the big side so I'm going to make that 0.2 if you put in wrong values in these bu buttons, if I like to say put in point 0.1, it should go red, which indicates that the value is not allowed. So I put the 0.2 back in. So now what it, it does is it excludes a little bit in the very middle, which on some of my Takahachi scopes isn't the best place to focus, and it excludes the very edges. Um, the other thing is there's a thing called backlash in and out. So this is if your module, your, your autofocuser module, doesn't have backlash in it. So you never want two lots of backlash systems uh, competing with one another, so it's one or the other. But if it didn't, and it was just a simple motor moving backwards and forwards, when I bring the focuser in board, it's normally against gravity, and so therefore all the gears are always in one direction. But typically on outward moves, um, I might, for instance, put 100 steps in. So what happens is, um, on an outward move, it would apply um, backlash so that the final movement was always inboard against gravity. But I'm going to zero that out because my module has it built in. Moving on, we don't have a dome, so that's not a big issue. Um, on the imaging tab, um, we can set what we want to do for our file naming strategy and you can see that there's a pattern review here and you type in all these different things here which is quite good because I think if I just put my cursor somewhere and just do double click it adds it to the end not to the beginning okay so what you can do is you can build it up by double clicking in sequence the other thing you can do is do your meridian flip settings. So for instance, these are fairly conservative, five minutes are to meridian and a maximum of 10. So it will flip between five and 10. It uses telescope side appear. That's very dependent on your telescope. Not all telescope mounts report side appear. It can also recenter after the flip using astrometry or plate solving, which I leave on. Scope settle time after flip, uh, one second is fine. 
pause before meridian. I do not want to pause before the meridian because if you're careful with some mounts, if you flip too early, all that happens is you create a clash condition on the opposite side. Autofocus after flip, that's typically used where you have a moving mirror telescope where the mirror can flop about and will alter the focus position. With refractors, you don't normally need to uh, make this. Image options, I'm gonna leave those alone and I can leave these alone because we looked at those before. If I go on to the last tab, the plate solving tab, my plate solver is being defaulted to ASTAP in both cases. So I'm going to change the, that one to the local plate solver. And when I configure that, I need to find what they call the SIGWIN folder. And that is in a strange place, which is called app data. And there it is there. And when I next open Shutton and open Nina, all the index files we populated in here. Again, search radius, you can set the radius and the down sample factors and so forth. And the same with ASTAP, you can set what its down sample is, its search radius and the number of objects. And this would point to where the ASTAP program is residing in your program folders. And I think that's about it for general setups. Um, there's a few things just at the top I've just overlooked. So for plate solving, there's an exposure time. I think two seconds is probably a little bit on the short side. Five seconds, I would say using the loom filter, binning. I'm not going to downsample, but I'll bin two by two here. You can alter the gain setting for just for the purposes of doing astronometry. So I put a gain of 10 in, which is a bit higher than my normal. And then there's a couple of things here about pointing tolerances and rotation tolerances. So for instance, when you're doing centering, you want to know how close you need to be before it good is good enough. So typically I put in about 0.2 arc minutes there because the paramount is fairly accurate. If you had a mount with a lot of backlash, you might um, open that up a bit. Rotation tolerance of one degree is reasonable. Number of attempts, I'll put in two attempts because if it really doesn't do it on the first one, it will never do it. Delay between attempts, a couple of minutes max. So basically, if there was a small cloud came along, it will try again in a couple of minutes and hopefully that's gone away. But if you do do binning, uh, don't do down samples as well because if you down sample too much, the very small stars just disappear and, and ASTAP or the other plate solvers won't detect it. So if we now go back to our main options tab and the general, all the things that we've been changing and setting will now be automatically updated in this YouTube profile. So I'm going to close this down and reopen it. So if I try and close it down now, it'll probably come up with a warning message, as it has done, because I still have um, imaging equipment connected. So I'm going to cancel that for a second, and I'm going to hit the general disconnect button, and it will disconnect all my devices. I now can shut down and if I reopen it, it should ask me which profile I want. So for instance, these are all my various profiles. So I can hit YouTube, low profile, and everything's been stored and remembered. And if I go into my options tab, and I go into my plate solving, and my local plate solver, here are all the indexes that I mentioned that have now been referenced for the local astrometry.net plate solver. The next video is going to look at setting up a simple target and doing a very simple sequence. Because what we've done now is what you typically do in every single type of imaging app, which is set up your equipment and the basic device specific settings. And now what's left is the things that differ from one night to the next, depending on when you're imaging it, what you're imaging, or how many different targets you're imaging in one night. Thanks for watching.